Okay, thank you everyone for coming to the urban Northampton's Urban Forestry Commission meeting uh, for January 18th, 2023. Uh, we have multiple members of the public. So now would be the time for the public if they have any comments to please do so, just raise your hand. Um, Carol. Yeah, sorry, I'm off the Zoom page though. Um, I just wanted, I sent um, you, Rich, something. I uh, Well, I sent you something today about Senator Cream. You, and I did get a response from you. She filed her municipal trees bill again um, already. And I don't know um, too much about that bill, um, but, um, and I assume that you all were aware of that last time it didn't pass. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm, I'm just curious if you have time to discuss it if you have an opinion about the bill. Um, and also I sent you, an, at the last meeting, I said I would try to find some talks and things like that for you. And I've been looking and I did send you one thing that's happening this weekend. Did you fo did you see that, Rich? Because I did not get a response. So I just want to make sure you actually saw it. Um, yeah, I did. The native, I don't, and I don't know if it's the kind of thing you're interested. Well, this thing, it's a Doug Tallamy talk, The Nature of Oaks. Um, and it's on February 1st, which is a Wednesday. Um, it's a Zoom webinar and you have to register for it. And I don't know if you, if people would be interested in that or if you forwarded it to them. So I just wanted to check. Did, did you get that? Yep, I did. Okay. All right, um, thank you. Um, anyone else from the public? Uh, Jackie Balance. Yeah, hi everybody. I just wanted to welcome Jordan Freed. I believe he's a friend of Jesse Olson who was here last meeting and they are from the uh, Sunrise Movement, I believe. Um, at least I know Jesse is. And I invite Jordan to introduce himself if he would like to. Thank y'all. Good to see you. Thank you, Jackie. Good to see you too. Um, anyone else from the public? Public comment. Where is Jordan? Jordan, are you? Uh, I see you are there. I don't know if you want to introduce yourself at this point. No, maybe he can't hear me. Okay. Uh, barring no other hands uh, being up at this time, I'll move the meeting forward. Uh, so I sent you your your packets, and uh, in the packet were the minutes from our last meeting. Which hey, are... hey, Rich, I'm sorry, yeah. it's Deirdre. It took me a while. I'm I'm the blind person using a screen reader here. No, um, no, I no. did have a I do sure. have a question for you. It just took me that long to unmute. Um, uh, when you did the plantings on Warfield, uh, everybody seems to notice that no trees went up at that new corner house, that big, big building that no one quite knows what it is. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, someone was told, I can't, I can't remember who, that they didn't want any trees there. And um, the neighborhood kind of wanted to know, this was my old neighborhood, um, and I have friends there still, kind of wanted to know why they were exempted uh from having any trees there uh sure i can i'll answer that in my in the uh after we in my tree report okay okay great thank you very Thanks. much i'm yeah. gonna unmute or i'm gonna mute now okay okay hey and folks this is jordan i've had a little problem with my video um i just want to say hello and or with my audio rather and yeah thanks for the welcome um i'm not sure about the person you mentioned but i don't know them um, but yeah, I'm here as a citizen and um, an arborist, urban forester, and a resident of Florence. So thank you. Oh, well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else before I move on to the minutes? No. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. It's nice to see so many faces uh, at today's meeting. Uh, I sent you the packet, as I was talking about before, with the minutes uh, from uh, one four. Um, 23 and um i thought i did a i thought i did a pretty good job of just perusing them and i realized that we had a new urban forestry commission member her name 
was Jennifer West. So um, that has got to be corrected. Uh, I already talked to Bonnie about it, so we're all good. Jennifer, Jen, your name, last name apparently changed, or you have a uh, someone else on the commission I'm not aware of. So all right. I have an alias. That's yeah. good. I always wanted an alias. <laughs> so, so that is uh, the correction that I noticed. And of course, I'll give you time to read them if you haven't done so already. If you have other corrections or comments, please uh, feel free to do so at this time. I have one uh, correction outside of uh, the name thing. On page two, where it says fall planting wrap up, the last bullet, it says we will be planning again this spring. I think it should be planting. Thank you. Yeah. Molly. I have a comment too. On that same page, the first paragraph under the chair tree warden report, um, near the end of that paragraph, it says, it is an interesting concept and should be examined further to determine if a feasible goal is for 2023. I think it's supposed to say um, if it is a feasible goal for 2023. Yep, thank you. Anyone else? Just let, just let me know when you're done with the minutes, please. I'm done. Thank you. Have we had um, better luck posting the minutes on the town's website? Uh, all the minutes, I believe, have been posted up till the beginning of uh, October. So we're still working on that gap um, that we have from March until September, I believe. I have to double check, but so uh, some minutes got posted today. I have to go. I have to go look at the city's uh, uh, agenda center to see what if the rest of the minutes have been posted. Uh, I, I would just make a, a small change to the. Um, end of page two, it says, uh, David would like us to continue working with the schools. If each school accepted 16 trees, that would be great. And that's true. But two schools have already accepted 16 trees, Jackson Street and Ryan Road. But it would be great if all the other schools accepted 16. <laughs> David, which schools, Jackson Street and what? Jackson Street and Ryan Road Elementary. Thank you. I'll move that the minutes be accepted as amended. There's a motion on the floor to uh, accept the minutes of 1423 as amended. Uh, is there a, do I have a second? Sue, are you done reading them? Yeah, Sue and Rob. Rob. Uh, just give, let, let's just give her one a minute. <clears throat> muted, I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. And just waiting for Rob. Yeah, yes, I'm done. You're all set. Okay, so there's a, a motion on the floor to accept the minutes as amended for 1423. I need a second, please. I'll second that. All right, David seconds. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, seeing that there is no discussion, Bonnie, could you take a roll call, please? Absolutely. Um, Rich? Uh, yes. Susan? Molly? Jennifer? Yes. Rob? Yes. And David? Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, chair reports. Uh, so uh, who was it asked me, was it De Darcy or Deirdre? Who asked me the question about the Warfield Place trees? 
Deirdre did. Deirdre, okay. Um, so the, the Warfield Place is actually, um, the public right away, the layout there is um, sort of odd. At, at that end of the street on the leg that runs off to uh, State Street, the edge of the public right away is actually where the curb is on the left hand side of, of that large rectangular building. So the any of the lawn area that is uh, in front of that building all the way up to the curb is private property. So, yeah, I, I want to add that um, I had two meetings I mean, quick discussions with the owner who did consider our offer to plant on the lawn, which would be on his property. These would be called setback trees. But he, on consideration, declined to have us do that. So, you know, we've we've done what we think we can to get trees there. Um, okay, so a couple of things that I have to report. One is that um, got a public shade tree hearing scheduled for February second at three sixty seven Coles Middle Road. Um, a confirmation today from the Delhi Hampshire Gazette about the legal ad. So that's to remove two small trees, a two inch sugar maple and a four and a half inch elm um, to make way for a driveway for by right construction. So the residents have agreed to uh, the terms of our public shade tree regulations for mitigating the loss of those two trees. So providing there's no objections at the hearing, um, we should have a um, a check for the mitigation for those two particular trees, plus the the fees associated with the, remo the removal and, um, I'm sorry, the fee associated with the legal ad for the Daily Hampshire Gazette. Rich, was, it, was the, the elm tree something that that, uh, that, that we, the DBW? No, 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 it's just growing there naturally. It just happens to be in the way. And they're, they're not really, their disturbance, um, because that project was all vetted by Conscom, their disturbance there is they have very tight margins. So there are other trees there, but they're not going to impact them, which is a good thing. So it's just really right. small, the two small trees. Um, uh, let's see, I attended uh, last week, I attended for three days the Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters Conference in, in Sturbridge. Um, which um, was very interesting and uh, uh, nice to visit with people in person. It was a little different than uh, the last two years, which was on Zoom. Um, so I actually gave me some pause for thought because we had some really good speakers there. One of them um, that I thought would be a good speaker for us to try to get uh, to come to one of our meetings is uh, Dr. John uh, uh, Professor John Rogan, excuse me, from Clark University. They've done a lot of uh, studies um, in the last 10 years on the urban heat island effect on the city of Worcester. They've also done, um, they've also studied um, the urban heat island uh, effect of communities that have received greening of the gateway um, funds or programs from DCR. So it was really interesting. Um, their presentation was about a half hour long. So I've reached out to him in an email, and hopefully I'll have some some correspondence with him in the in the future. So that I think would be um, a good person for us to a good guest speaker. That's one that I have trying to line up, which I think in our we could talk about in our the end of our meeting. So, um, but it was really just uh, there was 450 people there. Um, there were 80 students from two different vocational schools, which was great. We have a liaison on the board of uh, executive board that actually reached out to uh, um, Norfolk Aggie and uh, forgot the other. Jen, what is the what is the tech school? That's Brisk School Aggie? Brisk, yeah, thank you. Yes, yeah. yep. So it was really nice to have the students there. Um, you know, there were a lot, there were like 30 vendors there. Um, you know, we, we did uh, definitely have it was just nice to be in person everyone was really very good about being distant and masking if required and very respectful so it was a little different feel than what i was anticipating so it, it was good i also uh was uh nominated and elected as the vice president of the organization so i'll be doing that for the next two years so the conference um 
uh, the responsibility of the vice president is to actually line up all the speakers for the next two years for the next two conferences. So that'll be an interesting take. I've never done this before. So that'll be interesting. And then after that, you move into the presidency unless you don't want to do, you know, unless you don't want to go any farther. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely, so I, I hope to have a lot of, um, um, hope to have the ability to actually bring you a lot of a mix of industry practice or people that can actually come and talk to us about industry standards and also folks that can talk to us about the, you know, the different climate change studies that have been done that I've seen like Clark from Clark University. So um, I don't have, that's really about it uh, for our, uh, my tree uh, chair and tree warden report. Um, I can actually kind of roll that into the STO update. So I have been in contact with uh, Carolyn Mish from planning uh, and sustainability. So the, our recommended, our draft recommended changes to the STO, she has accepted them. So what we sent to them the last time where we reduced the DBHs in the different, um, in the different zoning districts, she is, she is fine with it. So I am in the pro I'm waiting to hear back from the mayor's office uh, to actually have a meeting with the mayor to discuss the changes to the SDO and uh, get the mayor's uh, approval. And if we do so, then she would create an order that would end up going to city council. Um, and then um, there would be, obviously, because it is a zoning change, there would be, it would be referred out to a, a city council subcommittee, and then it would end up um, going back into city council uh, as a public hearing uh, to talk about the zoning change. And then the council would probably take it up uh, under dis advisement or discussion based upon what the subcommittee would like to do, and then end up going um, to two different readings. So there's there's a long way for it to go, um, but uh, yes, Jen. So if I just am wondering procedurally, like so, if some of the uh, commission, uh, the uh, oh, the the city council members, if yeah. if they have questions specifically, would they usually come to you to ask those questions, or would we have some role we needed to do? So I, I so I, I would think that. Um, in, in this, you know, yes, that they could ask us at any time to come to any one of the meetings. My my personal feeling is, is that when we go in front of city council after we, some of us are gonna have to be present yeah. to answer questions, I would imagine, or to, may, they may even want uh, to, for us to give them a short presentation. I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And gotta get through the mayor. I gotta get, uh, in, we may end up meeting with Carolyn and the mayor and myself. I just, we haven't, I haven't got a date yet, but the email has been sent out. so. I will keep you posted. So yeah, I was just curious what the yeah, yeah. Thing is. Yeah, I mean, I I would think it would be good to have commissioners present, uh, especially at the public hearing, mm -hmm. uh, because we are you know we're trying to drive this uh, we're trying we're driving the changes to the ordinance, and I think people will want to hear from us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, yes, Molly. I think if we are asked to come in and do a presentation, um, we should request that we do it in conjunction with the planning office because they're the ones who wanted to do it in the first place. And we're the ones who made changes to what they wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, that's a good point. That's why I think we I'm, we may end up meeting with uh, Carolyn, the mayor and myself, but I, we haven't got that far yet. So I'm sure the mayor is gonna reach out to Carolyn and ask her, you know, are you okay with these changes? And Carolyn is, said that she's fine with them. She said, well, you know, the city has to recognize that the reduction in the diameter of breast height of uh, these trees is going to possibly create, uh, I wouldn't say financial hardship, but it would create a, another um, financial layer or a costly layer to potential development. So I think that that is always sort of rattling in the background, which we've talked about in the past. It's sort of like a, it's sort of like a trade. It, uh, unfortunately, it's a trade-off. Um, you know, the lower the DBH threshold, the higher. Right. But um, it wouldn't have been, um, none of that would have happened if if planning hadn't filed it in the first place. So what, what we requested was just paring back on the number of trees that could um, be cut without penalty. R right. So are you, are you talking about the original ordinance back in the day when it first came out? Or are you talking about recently? Because I, I do not believe that planning sustainability did not 
did not want to reduce the DBH. They, they didn't. They right. Wanted, right. So we're the ones that started this one uh, with Lily when she was the chair. And we've just sort of carried the mantle. But it, it's kind of immaterial where it came from. But I think I. I think what I'm hearing from you is that having the support of planning and sustainability, the mayor and this commission is extremely important in order to make the case to push this ordinance forward um, in this present iteration. So um, I think it has to be done in that in that fashion. So I, again, when I have a meeting with the mayor, I'll let you all know, and then I'll report out after the meeting is over uh, at one of our future meeting dates. Anybody have any questions about that? Oh, thank you for keeping the ball rolling. I know everybody's busy. It's hard to get these people's attention. Yeah, no, it's it's fine. We need to, you know, it's nice to get this. We've worked really hard on multiple ordinances in the last um, uh, last two years. So I think it seems like it, it seems like it takes forever, but it it's coming to a it's coming to a positive close, I believe. Um. Okay, uh, let's see, we're doing time. We're actually running a little early. Okay, so I blocked out a time, a half an hour to talk about goals and objectives for 2023, continued from last meeting. Um, unfortunately, I wish that I had sent you a um, email with what I had jotted down, but I don't know if someone else kept track of what we were talking about, but, but I did. And we just back i'm sorry wasn't the list in the minutes yeah yeah it wasn't and, there. and i have on okay. my computer well, our shared the google sheet from the city drive mm -hmm. with the goals that we talked about i don't know if anybody else looked at that i could share or are you talking about the goals that we had from last year yeah that sheet with all the green on it yeah i don't know if Maybe we don't need to go, you know, through all that. Like maybe other people could just take a look. I have a pretty strong idea. What I think is important is planting trees and getting people to plant little trees. So, and it, I, it is in the meeting minutes. Okay, you are correct. That's right, it is in the meeting minutes. I just wanted to make sure that, yeah. So what I had in my notes was setback plantings, uh, the door hanger. Um, Yep, Molly had setbacks. Yeah, a list of uh, trying to figure out how we're going to talk, you know, how we're going to uh, <clears throat> in, in, informative information about the spotter lantern fly. Um, and I think Molly and Jen, you guys were going to reconvene your subgroup at some mm -hmm. point. You were just going to let me know so I could yeah. uh, make an agenda for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Next level of next level of possible uh, tree regulations. Obviously, we were that's in our that's in our wheelhouse about trying to uh, work with uh, trying to gather more data about the actual the the city's tree canopy and its actual uh, density um, over the last uh, twenty years. Um, David's working on school department plantings. Um, the pollinator groups commissioner vacancy that was i don't know if that's a if that was on there i can't remember but we need to work about we need to try to get our vacancy our vacancy filled yeah speaking of that did, did everyone fill out that um survey yeah send it back to the mayor's i mean to the city to laura kutzler okay thank you uh statewide issues was another uh goal uh trying to maybe partner with the uh with this uh, town of Amherst, possibly and have a joint meeting, yes, Molly? I think it would be worth, I mean, I don't wanna interrupt what you're doing, but I think no, it would be worth looking at that sheet that Sue is referring to, to just review it. Sure. And see which of those things are done? Yeah. Which of those things did we never get around to and still wanna do? Or which of the things we think, uh, we don't really need to do them? Do you want me to share? Sure, let me just make you a co-host. Yeah, you're a co-host and you okay. can share away. Share. Okay. So this, are people seeing it? Yeah. So, yes. So could you do me a favor? Could you go up with, uh, and reduce it to 75%? Aye, aye. Please, it would just maybe, or not, or 
Does yeah. that help? Yeah. I, I, can everyone read that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So it has various tabs. It has 2021, 20 to 2021, 2021 actual. And then it has some other tabs. Boy, there's a lot of tabs. Can you guys see the tabs at the bottom? Oh yeah. Great. Those are supposed to be those are supposed to be kind of reports uh, from the people who were in charge of each task, um, oh. updating where we were at on those things. Okay. Um, how would you like me to navigate? Should we just look at the activity description and see if there's anything that jumps out yeah. at anybody? Yeah. Additional credentials. Arborist exchange departmental accreditation which is rich getting lots of new things urban tree canopy assessment that's kind of a neat one yeah and we have that. that's still in process and to have an in, a new inventory if we can figure out how to get funding um other people chime in please Species list and public tree care guide, which is something we have already. We were going to update today? it. So is that was that ever done? Updated? No. It was not. The species list. No. I have it on my agenda file. So is that is that something that's still a priority for us this year? Or not so much? Uh, I mean, I, I think we should go, I mean, it probably would be good for Jen and I to go through it and just maybe have a 20 minute conversation about what's in there and then see if there's things that we want to add. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things in the back of that document that are not related to, I mean, they're all related to trees, but not related to the tree species, either tree protection uh, regs and all those things that has to get continue to be built out. But that's something that I uh, based on energy standards, we're going to have to continue to put something together and then hopefully get Alicia to do the design work because Alicia designed all those things. But mm -hmm. I mean, Jen, I'm, I'm game to have a calm conversation. Yeah, I think that's a good starting mm -hmm. point. I think that mm -hmm. actually makes more sense than me hoeing through it and communicating. You know, yep. if we could just, yep. it wouldn't take long to just nope. paint through it. So nope, we that's can... fine. I'll, I'll uh, send you an email and we'll go yep. from there. Okay. Sounds good. You. So yeah. we'll add, add that to our list. Yeah. <laughs> Next is policy or plan update, which we're well, we did a lot on that this year. I think we can say check. We did that. <laughs> is there a place to do that? Mm, we can always add a column. Just put complete next to it in the, in the, yeah. you know. Insert one column to the right. Yeah. Insert, oh, to the right. And then just put done or something whatever okay single issue plans identify streets as cut throughs okay i never did do that is that still a priority we have to look at everything and then we'll get a feeling okay. of all right what really is a burning issue um and tree planting program that's a neighborhood that's a neighborhood tree planting thing that we have where people can apply from a neighborhood. We right. Review that and see if it was working. I'm making so, a note. So if I if I remember correctly, the things that are in green were the things that we set as goals for last year. Am I correct? Uh, yeah. Right? yeah, I think that sounds right. So the things in white were things that were tabled just because it's this is an overwhelming list based yeah. on well rich if yes, that's rich. true it, it seems like young tree training was tabled I, I find that hard to believe um well, i don't think I, they were tabled necessarily in that last worded column like it says tree planting projects ongoing planting of trees like that's clearly a priority of ours but mm -hmm. that is in it's going the, the mechanism is there we're doing it mm. and uh same thing with survival monitoring same thing with planting removal ratio i think that's been done and the young tree training we're definitely doing 
Great. So so it'll just say ongoing, which is yeah. right now. Yeah. That's great. Because we're we've set up the mechanism and it's it's rolling. And then we there was some enthusiasm about urban wood utilization as all the older trees come down, finding a way to getting that to the needy, that wood as fuel. Yep. I, I, yep. What's the is the, what's the status of that? Well, I, I did actually find people who are utilizing in diff different states um, some of this wood. And th their final word was the best way to find a piece of a big nail on a tree is with your with your saw. Mm. So, so <laughs> you know, when I tried to drill down as to how we're going to do this. Um, I was it, talking to the people in Athol, the city workers, and they have a very active plant program. Uh, um, if somebody wants to talk to them, it's kind of bare bones, but the community is really interested in it. And um, they help, but the pandemic kind of threw it through a ringer. Um, I guess they have a splitter or something, but yeah, it is an issue that there's metal in urban trees, there's a lot of metal in urban trees. Yeah. Um, anyway, it, it turns out that you, you, I started out by asking some of the local mills that have, you know, big um, radial saws and that's not how you do it. You, it's these smaller portable saws that are apparently the applicable ones, even though it's huge trunks. Um, well, maybe I'll pursue it a little further. I, I felt a little like I was at a dead end. But uh, I, I'm only talking about slabs. I wasn't talking about splitting, which is a whole nother. Oh, yeah, I thought we were talking about firewood. N well, I, I I was interested in not firewood because um, there are people. When when I say people are utilizing these uh, trunk tree trunks, they're actually sawing them up into slabs, which once once they're sawed up, sawn up and dried, are very valuable. Oh. Um, so there's some hmm. incentive to do it. Um, but it takes a particular kind of mill, and um, oh, and they're wow. and they are hitting the the uh, they are hitting the nails with their mill. But they Both find of it the hard. the trees that we take down are ones that are defective mostly. It's hard to see that there'd be a lot of trees that have good slabs in them. So the, sometimes the the maples that are def defective. You mean yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Are, are some of the most valuable because it's called spalding maple. Mm. All right. It's extra valuable. I mean, the, I think your hopes would be that if I'm understanding, instead of burning the wood and releasing the carbon to try yeah. to get people to use the wood so we sequester the carbon. Definitely, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. Yep. I see. Yeah, I was just thinking it was firewood too. Mm, well, well there, that's what it says. Definitely, there's a whole huge thing of people people using slabs all over for furniture and stuff, and it's a big business. I mean, really, you could do both. You could you could use make it into slabs, whatever part's good enough for that, and whatever's left over that could be used for firewood. So, really, you could do both. Yep. Anyway, it, it's it's not completely impossible, but the local mills that you think of, like Lashway and stuff, they're not going to do it. Apparently. Okay, so um, working down our list, tree protection, that's an ongoing as well. Um, enforcement proceedings. That's, that's just hearings, right? Well, that's that's hearings, that's meeting with contractors. Um, I like yesterday I met with uh, Eversource, Eversource Gas in regards to a huge gas uh, project they're doing on. Uh, uh, let's see, it's Forbes, Maynard, Washington uh, Place, and eventually Dryads Green and part of Elm Street. They're going to replace all the gas mains. Mm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, so that's that would be an enforcement because I'm enforcing the city's. Uh, Public shade rules and regulations, tree protection, airspace, pruning. 
Hey, Sue, you, can, you, can you expand that last column so that the full comments are readable? What I mean is um, you could you could format it so that it's word wrap and that they would. Oh, on mine so it's word wrap, but um, here, let's see if. Like, like some of them they just stop mid-sentence and you can't see what the rest of it says. Oh, geez. I or, or you could just spread it out to pull it out to the side so it's longer. Make the column wider. I'll make it wider because okay. It, in my oh, view, it's wrapping. That's better. That's better. Okay. Yeah, I think it's wrapping here too for me. Well, it's wrapping, but it, it's not making the the um the cell taller so that the next lines are cut off. But now this is good. Hmm. hmm. Okay, so where are we at? Um, Oh, Forest Health Management, D24, we'll ask. It's so closely related to um, the inventory goal, which isn't it like looking at the health of the trees and the condition? Well, I think Forest Health Management um, refers to uh, non- not public shade trees. The forest health management yeah. pertains to like the city's watershed. Oh, okay. Things that are managed, um, which actually you can uh, you can unfortunately erase Molly Freilish or Molly F because she's uh, no longer uh, works for the for DCR. Um, mm. But that is that really in our purview because they're not. It's 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 really it's not in our purview, but I, you know, I, I'm, it's it's all connected. <laughs> you know, everything okay. is connected. I mean, there's really only one watershed. Yep. There's uh, the one watershed, the Roberts Meadow Reservoir water, uh, watershed uh, within the city limits. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's right. You know, Mountain Street and the Ryan Res; those are outside. They're in Whateley and uh, Haydenville, so yeah. or Williamsburg. Um, I mean, we could leave it on there, but I, you know, I don't really. And you have to remember that, like, we structured our goal sheet around the established goals for um, winning all those awards we win. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have them all coded and right, coded right. in specific ways. So we were seeing like, oh, well, oh, like, submit, you know, which they're, they're structured so we can that's just right. submit them. That's and right. We have to reword our work in terms of what the state looks for when they make do the awards. That's right. It's not that we were going to get involved with the forest management, but if if right. it was something that was done, we could just submit that as one of the things towards our our tree city. Exactly. Award. Yeah. And like ask Carolyn if open space was required means. You know that goes towards our points towards the awards we win. Yeah, yeah. Cooperative partnerships. Mm. Um, I don't know how we want to do this, but we if huh. we were updating it, we would put the Rotary Club. Yeah, you you could put the Rotary Club in there, and then just say ongoing because we are still obviously actively building partnerships outside of the existing ones that we. Schools too. What? The school department. Yeah, right. school, yeah. yeah, schools, yeah. Yeah, so the question is, do we want to try to reach out, like actively create more of those partnerships? Try to find, like try to find them or just wait until they come along? I mean, I you know, so if, if someone wants to do the outreach, I you know, we could continue to, to do that. Um, I think it's... With who? With the schools um no i mean i think i think molly right molly, anyone yeah i'm anyone, just talking right? in general oh yep um david's working with the schools with yeah. a couple of schools so past, that would be, sorry next year we'd put them i mean the past we've worked with the girl scouts you know oh that's already in there yeah i'd oh, say that's on other Bell. school bridge street all I'm saying is if somebody wanted to seek out partnerships, that's something somebody could do if they wanted to. Ah. New tree board member, we still, we need it again. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to it's ongoing. We have to that one. On on that note, I, I don't know if this is the right time. I um there's two folks that uh well three folks that I've approached that uh potentially have interest who we prune with. Mm. So um oh. uh Rich Parrish was one person who was I talked to today and he asked me some questions and then uh, to folks who live in Village Hill, Miles and Jess, I Miles might even be at this meeting. Yeah, uh, I saw yeah, Miles. Just, yeah, just to like, I just said, come to the meeting and see, you know, see what you think. And so there, that's potential. I'll follow up with them. I just wanted you to know that that's happening. Yeah, everybody's um, people who come to the meetings, you know, who, who learn about it. That's the best way. Um, Vicky's been doing that. Oh, that was a separate thing, I guess. Hmm. Okay, that line we can get rid of. That's done. What? Uh, number line twenty nine. The the half mile tree planting surveys are done. Okay. Just delete it. I don't think we should delete Ooh, it. I done. think we should stay complete. We're done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so we can have a record. Oh, okay. So, citizen science, um, you've been doing another one this year, though. The spotted lanternfly isn't on here anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's farther down under some other category, but I don't think it is. I don't think we were talking about it back then. It is on the bottom, actually. It says preemptive education, educate and uh -huh. the spot or lantern. Oh, there we go. I thought there. Yep, there it's it is. The, the last the one. Very, yeah, it's on the it's on the very bottom. Um, yep. How's that? Um, sure. Not perfect. And then it looks like maybe there's more stuff down here. Wait, before you go down, go back up to the last green line. That's something that we are planning to do. Um, work on those door hangers that we but talked that's about. Really a priority. Yeah, I think we, yeah, okay. I think it is. And I think we all agreed it was. Yeah. Has everybody seen this enough? Can I stop? Uh, yeah, I mean, I do. Um, I think um, with the information that's in the, the the most recently approved minutes, would it be helpful to put another tab in this for 2023? Okay. I, I don't know if that would be helpful for folks, or do you want to put all those things that we talked about that may not be on here just in this document and just have this like a working document? I don't. I'm not sure how you want it organized. I think I think we should do a new one for 2023 because okay. it's, it's kind of unclear which of these things were our well. It does say done, but it'd be nice to just get rid of the things that are done and just put down in one place a list of all the things that we want to do this year. So my, 2023 priorities. Yeah. And so my question is, is that what are the things on this list? Do you want to do you folks want to carry over? to 2023 or do you just want to leave that 2023 what we talked about in the last meeting and this meeting and i'm i'm wondering if we i i agree with molly i think we should well i personally think we should keep this but have a new page yeah yeah just because it's going to get so yeah, don't a new tab to look yeah. at yeah um, new tab. don't overwrite it we want to save the information but yeah but i also personally would like maybe to move forward that I can that a list is sent out of all past priorities that we've checked you know all the you know what I mean the ones we said this isn't done we should do this and the new ones we came up with and then before the next meeting if we could all look at them 
and kind of rate them from one to five or one to 10 or something like that, some system. Mm -hmm. And then we can come back in and maybe we all agree in the first top three, you know, and then we discuss what's the next ones, you, you know, kind of rank them. And then we could have people take charge of, you know, agree to be the, the lead person. I think it'd be more efficient, but it doesn't, you know, we don't have to do it that way. Just to clarify that the purpose of this, this is just to figure out what our priorities are, not as a checklist for the um, the Tree City Award, right? That's because that's a lot of these things are on here for that. Um, yes, th yes, that's correct. I think we we developed this list based on the changes to the Growth Award that had a lot of. Um, the growth award was changed in 2021 into 2022 that uh, expanded um, what municipalities or communities could actually um, use. A, and we utilized that framework as to add to the goals that we already had. Um, and this is what we, this is why this is so large, right? But I, I think it's important to, to recognize that we're, we're yes, we, we would like to have the growth award, and we will always have Tree City USA because we we will constantly qualify for that. It's not you don't on you don't uh, get disqualified unless the city closes. But no, you're, that's not going to happen. Mm. <laughs> um, but the but I think we have to drive these um, goals is really not because we're going to get an award, but because we we would like to get things done for the city yeah. canopy. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. Um, Sue, do you want to do that page for 2023 or or I could do it? I have a question uh, about I started to, but you can go ahead and take over. I have a question can I stop about sharing. Hi. I have a question Sorry. about the name. This is Rob. I have yeah. a question about the, the additional page, which is that wouldn't it be easier just to um have a column of 2023 and then decide? Just mm. fill in yes, no, yes, no, who's doing it? Yeah. Instead of a separate page. Yeah, um, we can do that. Because we have all the, well, not, apparently we don't have all the items. We have most of them already listed. <clears throat> and, and, and then we, I think there's a handful of new, new objectives, new, new, new goals. And so we could just fill those in at the bottom. And, uh, yeah, I think having too many tabs gets really confusing. Well, I think we can get rid of those old tabs because nobody was really using them. The ones where we were supposed to report what we were doing. I think I might have been maybe the only person that was actually doing that. Yeah, I wonder, does everybody have the link handy of this shared document? I, I have it in my computer. I don't have it right in front of me now. Is it in the shared drive? It is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if it might be sense make sense to share it with well, everybody. It would be good to share it, but the question is, is do you want to share it after it's cleaned up or do you want to share it now in the form that it's in? I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, I would like to see it if it's if if yeah. we're Molly are willing to make the changes to it and get rid of the tabs that we don't need. Um Molly, do you want to take the reins on that? I um I can do that. Oh, thank you. Know, you. you know, just the fact that you're do working on it, it, it then gets it's recommended to me when I open my drive. Just now. So this is that's what this is all about. It now thank you, Rob, for coming clean. We're up. never at a loss for ideas. Um <laughs> so no, no, we're not. We want to wrap up this section by just saying that. Molly's can try to have that ready for our next meeting and we can really nail down the goals. Uh, sure. Sound good? Yeah. And I got to get the volunteer numbers for the awards. Yes, I yes, thank you. I, I do need those for Tree City USA. So okay. when you have a moment, that would be fantastic. Okay, I'm going to reach out to Rob because he helps me with them. Okay um all right spring planting hi jordan 
Hello, Jordan. <laughs> uh, spring spring planting. Rob, do you want to? Uh... Yeah. So um, I've been working with Alicia. We've got about 40. Well, if you add the school, we've got about 50 or 60 trees that are either at the school or that we just didn't manage to plant last fall uh, sites tree sites and um we're gonna we need to integrate that rich with the list you have of the dead tree replacements because there was some uncertainty on our part as to whether we had really covered all the dead trees yes you know? I, I i have a no i i'm sorry i owe you that list and i owe you the re, the uh, locations where we remove trees that list as well so right and so so we and we owe you you then the comp once we'll then we're well on our way and we've gone through all the emails and all the sites that we know about that we didn't manage to to complete yep um so just for everyone to know we didn't we we never complete everyone because you have to match a tree to a site and always there's a mismatch and we never finish but there were an extra number that didn't get finished this year because we had a, a much shorter season than we had anticipated due to the drought um so in the fall there was kind of a rush to get in a bunch of trees which we did so so rich i think the spring planting i mean it's time it, hopefully by early february you'll be able to make an order that will cover the schools which jen has been working on and she's going to send me a list shortly i'll add that to the list of trees not planted and then we'll figure out which ones uh, i'll recommend to you which ones should come bare root based on um, what I think we can get from uh, Amherst or not get. Okay. And so, so I think the spring looks really good to get a, a good start, especially if we can get the schools ready. Um, and that would be, uh, Rich, can you remember? I mean, sometimes we start in in May or or, or April even, right? Uh, some well, it depends on the weather. I was yeah. We started like the week of Arbor Day. Where we we planted uh, like sixty or seventy trees in a week. Yeah, that's what is that the end of April or the beginning? No, that Arbor Day is usually the last Friday of April. We usually start end of April. Last year there was an International Day of Rotary Service, so we started like on April 9th. Mm -hmm. it, it, so, it, we were lucky. Normally you cannot do that, but so, so um, David and, and Jen, if you could like keep an eye on that so that the schools are ready, really starting the beginning of April, just in case, who knows what the, the ground, you know, is the, the frost isn't very deep at this point. There's a long list of stuff you have to do to work with schools. Barbara Devlin from Rotary did it for us last year. Oh, She's a former school superintendent, so it was in her wheelhouse. Um, there's like school calendars you have to get on yep. and there's a, there's this checklist of things you have to do. Um, if someone should wants we, to talk to her or. Should we invite her to work with us again? I hope. Oh, how do people feel about would. that? Well, I, th I think she would. I mean, they had a good time, I think. Are you talking about a public planting with the schools or are you talking about planting at the schools i'm a little confusing, confusing. planting at the schools okay yeah school property gotcha school property. Yep. They, yep. they have their own ecosystem of hoops that okay. everything has to go through like approval on the official calendar and you know oh. all their staffing and everything everybody's got to know what's going on Yes, and then there was that whole kerfuffle about whether or not they have to accept the trees, and we had to go through that whole process about actually it's already city property, so you don't have to accept it like it's a formal gift. And yeah, we thought at the last yeah. minute we'd have would have to go through the school board. Right. right. It, it all it all worked. It all just so, okay. If I contact Barbara and invite her to help sure. us, sure. Yeah, I mean, when you invite her, you could invite some of the same people to come back. That came through through her. Yeah. So I was thinking we had Mary on the barge and yeah. she's Rotary and other Rotary people who help plant. Yeah. So I'll say reach out to Barbara and Rotary about spring 
school plantings. And it helped having Rotary involved to get things moving. Now, it, do we have, we, we right now just have the lead school, right, in our sites, is that right? Or do we have other? Oh, um, uh, there, go ahead. Well, definitely lead school as Jenkins yeah. attest, but then there, I think there's a strong chance that we could get the Bridge Street School uh, acting fast. And I don't know if, Rob, you have the capacity to water trees for a, like a spring planting at Bridge Street. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's I mean, what one, one idea would be to just try to recreate last year's Rotary Day of Service on or about April 16th with both yeah. schools. Yeah. We can't be certain of the date until um, Rich uh, secures the trees. And, but that's why it all needs to be coordinated starting soon. Um, I don't remember at Bridge Street a lot of places where there's room to plant trees. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, um, a suggestion I would have is that it's, it's a lot easier if we have one site per day. Yeah. When we have multiple sites per day, um, we don't do as good a job, frankly, because um, one thing is decisions about roots, what yeah. to do when there's a crazy route, just oversight. You know, we, we want right. every tree to survive and without the oversight, um, they don't. We get spread a little too thin. Yeah. We get spread too thin. Well, that makes sense. Have your best people on site, whatever site you're working at, and not try to figure out, okay, who can we split? We had, you know, we split up to try to spread our best people. That was but, intense. Uh, so, so really, that leaves us with uh, both days being like Saturday, one day being Saturday, one being Sunday, because it's really not possible to plant on weekdays or when school is in session. Uh, yeah, it's it's not possible at all. Right. The only thing you can do is you could plant the week of school vacation, which is the uh, Patriots Day, uh, pa Patriots Day week, or the week when the tax man cometh. Um, which is usually that's like, a great idea. Yeah, so it's possible to do that. I also wanted to, I wanted to interject that I think now I'm not hedging my bets, but I mean we have no frost in the ground. It was 38 degrees today. You know, are we going to have a warmer than normal winter for the rest of the winter? It seems to be that way. It could snow a lot between now and then. But <clears throat> I, after our experience last year of planting early and then actually having to shut off very quickly because of the uh, because of the intense heat and then the subsequent drought we had, <clears throat> we may want to actually look at planting a little earlier this year, um, providing we can actually, you know, A, get the plant stock because don't forget, so the bare root stock comes from upstate New York. You know, they were buried in six feet of snow uh, before before Thanksgiving. I know John has a plethora of plant material because I've been over there twice already uh, in the last uh, month and a half, two months. And he has a lot of stock there because of the um, <clears throat> the lack of planting from DCR last, um, last uh, late spring and all fall. They didn't really plant very much. So John has a lot of plant material. So if we could actually move the plant material, we might be able to actually plant uh, quite a few trees this spring, but earlier than normal. But again, I could just open my mouth and we could talk next month and we could have 25 inches on the ground. So I, you know, but I mean, I just want to put that out there because I think it would be better if we got more trees planted in the ground earlier um, in case we get shut off quickly. Uh, because without having that big bump in the in the spring, um, if we have another drought situation, we we have a tendency. Obviously, we struggle with planting in the fall because we have to wait until there's enough soil moisture again. So that's just something to take into consideration. I know, and I also don't want to accelerate. I don't want to make more work for people, but I'm just putting that out there. It's a lot of moving pieces. So bare root, we can't get we can't do tentative early scheduling for because we don't that's a moving piece. We don't know when they're gonna get dug up out in New York state. So we'd have to have some projects, some planting days planned early tentative, but not have planned to be bare root. 
Yeah. So later. So, I mean, I, I, I need to do, I, m one of my goals tomorrow is to do the inventory in the nursery of what we have stock that we're holding over. So Rob has that list. I'm going to get him the uh, dead tree list that I modified after I went and just kind of double checked a few things from when the volunteers pull out uh, the trees that died. Um, and then um, I've got to get the removal list to you for those locations right. where the stumps have been ground. So we yep. can think about planting in those locations. So I have three things I need to get to you tomorrow. Great. So speaking to Sue's interest in your interest rates in getting planting early, because we have a bunch of trees that we um, identified sites for already and intended to plant and didn't get to, that really lends itself to an early start because uh, especially if, I, if we can pull some of the stock out of um, what Rich has at Spring Grove, we can start on a dime. Anytime Rich wants to go out with us, we can do it because we have the, we've identified the sites, we have the stock, but also we can get, the, it's pretty easy to get stock from um, Amherst Nursery as long as there's no snow on the ground. Um, and it's not too frozen. Yeah. So that, I think we have a good chance of starting early because of all that and and keeping the 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 school a little later the bare root a little later rather than the bare root being the first thing we do is that day of the 16th that david threw out is that what do you consider that um risky early for bare root or well when school vacation that's the week of school vacation is the 16th of april what? well yeah um uh, hang on uh, yeah, it's April 17th to the 21st is spring vacation. Yeah, I think if it were, I mean, by April 20th, I mean, what, what do you think, Rich? Pretty likely. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, think, I think we, you know, I think we've been successful in the past. I think it should be fine. I think, yeah. Bob, I think if Bob can get us, you know, we'll have to check in with him. We need to give him a list. And, yeah. you know, hopefully he can bear root, um, you know, the tree stock. If not, we'll have to just kind of backfill with what we can get from Amherst Nursery and what we have. Yeah. You know, don't forget, John. also John does, you know, John is doing bear root as well. So there's yeah. also another possibility there if we needed to get something um, to satisfy that, you know, the, the, the volunteer effort and kind of craft it around the week of school vacation, we could also do that as well. Right. And so, Rich, it would be more likely to get it from John early than from Bob because we're just in a warmer climate. Uh, yes. Yeah. And it seems like this winter, more of the cold weather has stayed out um, in the upper Midwest and Ohio mm -hmm. Valley, which kind of, you know, Buffalo is right or Orchard Park yeah. is right. Yeah. The path of that. So, okay. So, this will be kind of an ongoing, a uh, little bit shifting around to, Exciting to start talking about it already. Yeah. Um, and, uh, this is a question for David or Jen. Are you so you you met the other day with folks from Leeds School? I um David kind of coordinated it all. It was awesome. He he like you know set the the stakeholders up and everything. So I met with the folks at Leeds School, the principal and the parent who was active. And uh, over the weekend, I um, and she, I have the maps that David uh, got to me and to them. Um, uh, so I, over the weekend, um, completed a list of, I selected trees and Friday, I'm just doing a walk around with Alicia just to bounce my, you know, bounce it off somebody. And it, Friday, I can get Rob the list of trees that I think should go there. And um, that's kind of where we're at. And okay. they're just waiting for, and then I was assuming I would hand you the map, mm -hmm. Rich. And um, I don't know how, because you have to meet with the principal and the Tony K, right? From the school department. Yeah, I, I, did, I, think Rob, I think Rob did that last year. Yeah. So oh, I, I would meet with them or, but I would want you to come so that you, you know, sort of it all gets tra transferred over all the information and pass sort of, the torch to Tony. Uh, yeah, a little torch the passing. Person. Okay. Yeah, the only missing step, Jen, is if you, if you give 
me the map, I can give it to Chris Chamberlain. Yeah, no, yeah, I knew to yeah, do a 2.0 yeah. so that then. Right, yeah, 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 right, right, yep. Right. And yeah. also, it, what Rich and and Rob and I walked around with Tony at Ryan Road, and that too, that was effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, whatever you whatever you need for me, I'll I'll be there to do whatever you. And whenever. it sounds like Chris Chamberlain is volunteering doing these beautiful maps for these projects. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll add that in volunteer contributions. Yeah, he's uh, he volunteered for one thing, and we just keep asking him for more. <laughs> it's a, it's helpful. Those maps are good. Oh, the, that's a a lifesaver. But we can put it in our volunteer accomplishments that we had volunteers making, you know, maps. Um, Rich, I think um, the thinking was around you being at the walk around with with Tony is that last year it worked, you know, and mm -hmm. developed a rapport and um, here's the same thing happening again. It's not anything different, you know? Yeah. So uh, I think that was the, the yeah. thinking. Okay. I'm more than happy to, I'm not going on vacation anytime soon. So we'll have to here. Ryan Road and, and uh, Jackson Street had big infrastructure uh, issues. I, I just have an inkling that um, in terms of being in the way of our trees, I just have an inkling that it won't be true out at Leeds, but I might be wrong. I, I think behind the school building, which is where most of it is, there probably aren't. It's pretty it, wide open. I mean, there's no overhead. Anything. Yeah, it was all in ground. They had huge kind of in ground stuff. At the, oh, at the, that the I, I don't know. But yeah, the, principal there, seemed, the principal seemed pretty knowledgeable um so yeah. i but, okay yeah. yeah tony all right so we 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 have a tentative we have a tentative plan which is which is good so i, I owe you those lists rob jen and david i'll get them to you tomorrow or friday by friday uh just to kind of keep us we're a little over time here okay arbor day seedling selection and event so I sent in a packet um, our the Arbor Day uh, seedling list for Mass Tree Wards and Foresters. Would you like me to share it? Screen sure. share? Sure. I pulled it up so that it would be handy. Yep. Here we go. Is it showing? It is. Yeah. Blue spruce, white spruce, Douglas fir Lincoln, white oak, tulip poplar, pin oak, Fraser fir, North, northern hackberry, pawpaw, Ginkgo, lilac, lac, eastern red book, bud, service berry. And then I don't know what pre bagged seedlings means. Uh, so the, the pre bagged seedlings are plugs, basically, like plug, they're a plug plus two. And they actually are in a bag uh, with a tag that says Mass Tree Wardens and Forester Association. Um, it would be typically a lot of communities buy them that don't that are not as active as we are that are uh, a lot of utility companies uh, like eversource and grid they buy them and they hand them out because they're convenient they you know you just have the bag and you give it to a student um the right. other let's be ambitious and just do the top part maybe this well i mean i think the top i think that the top part is what we've done always you know we've always had a, a bag and tag day for ourselves or a couple of bag yeah. and tag day events so um I'm, you know, whatever, whatever the commission would like to do, do you want to do another 600? Um, I guess that's one question I have. The, uh, another comment I would have is that this, um, this brochure went out a little earlier this year. So I, I'm the, I'm the coordinator. We already have like six orders already. Uh, typically I don't get orders until February. So I think people are going to be because we had an in-person conference and everyone that came through that door got a seedling brochure. So my goal for Mass Tree Wardens and, you know, just for the environment in general is to sell all the seedlings that we have in reserve, which is about 33,000. So last year we sold 20, almost 29,000 out of the 30,000 that we had. Wow. That's great work. What are the, what are the, are there any species that, you know, might not, grab the public but that we think are really healthy health food for our canopy any particular species on this list uh, 
I'm, I mean, my only, I, Hackberry. Hackberry. Yep. Um, I also. I think yeah. we could sell that because of all the eco benefits. It's yep. amazing. I was going to uh, say that too. I yeah. also think the pawpaws. That's the next one I was going to say. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I Mama. think that'll I'll be stop. an easy sell. <laughs> yeah. Everyone wants a pawpaw. Yeah. I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop talking. But those are the two. I mean, obviously the stand, you know, the old standbys, the white oak, um, tulip poplar. Um, I would not necessarily get the pin oak just because it's in the red oak group and we're heavily, right. uh, we have uh -huh. heavy, uh, heavy um, we're already heavy with oak, especially in the red oak group. Carol, hi, Carol, you have your hand up. Go ahead. I do. Um, hi. Um, I'm wondering if you would consider not getting ginkgos or lilacs because they really don't have a lot of benefit for, um, you know, native pollinators and birds. Yeah, we typically we have not gotten them in. Well, we have got the lilacs in the past, but I would I'm I'm deferring to the commission on this one. I've yeah. already kind of said what I needed to say. Yeah, I don't want to take up all the airtime. I think service berry is a nice choice that has um, fruit um, that birds eat. Service berry is great. I would. The only thing I said was um, ginkgo and lilac. Yeah. 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 I think we should get at least maybe just one um, fur uh -huh. because I think, um, you know, evergreens have, uh, uh -huh. you know, benefits throughout the winter. So, and I would say, I personally think we should stay away from spruce because there's a lot of uh -huh. disease. So that would be the Douglas fir, Lincoln. Do, 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 does anyone or, know what that is? Or the Fraser fir. I don't. I tried to look up Lincoln, and I couldn't really. Oh. I couldn't. I couldn't, hmm. I couldn't find what was unique We've about. We've had that Lincoln variety. quite a few times in the past. What is Fraser fir? I think people would go for that. Fraser fir. Fraser fir is like a kind of like a balsam fir that grows in a little um, warmer areas. It's it's a, it's very popular in the Christmas tree industry. Hmm. Service there. Like it's the number one Christmas tree sold in the. Yeah, the, those Fraser firs in that column that are seven to twelve and their uh, age is one oh. Those are actually, I believe, uh, they are a plug. So they are oh. bare root. So they would come to us as plugs, and then we would just hand them out as such. Wait, Wait, the Fraser fir is listed in both sections, the top and the bottom section. That, that is correct. The ones that are in the lower section are already pre-bagged. So, right. So, can we get the ones from the upper section? Yes, I'm just telling you that they're going to be plugs, and they're not our typical bare root. Oh, okay. even in the upper section. Just that one. Just that one particular species. That's it. Thank you. Yep. Okay. That's all right. Okay. So, so so far, I have pawpaw, northern hackberry, service berry. Fraser fir, white oak. Um, yes, I'm fine with white oak. Yeah, great. And tree. then tulip poplar grows. You know, it's it's a pretty one. Okay, so Fraser tulip poplar is amazing because they grow super fast. Yeah, I'm just oh, wondering if it's like Jack and the Beanstalk though. You're giving people <laughs> something that will give them a big surprise. <laughs> so that's sorry. Right, so I have. Pawpaw, Northern Hackberry, Service Berry, Fraser Fir, White Oak, and Tulip Poplar. That's a hundred of each would be six hundred. So that's our. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Yep. Well, All I right. think getting shade for people as it gets hotter is a is a, is a priority. So if we can do the Tulip Poplar and tell people, you know, this is a shade tray. <laughs> Give it space. <laughs> okay. Can I stop shade. sharing? Uh, <laughs> yes, that would be great. And I'm sorry. I I don't know if anyone else had their hand up. I couldn't really see because I don't have my screen open far enough. Okay. All right. Anybody have a question? Anybody have any questions? No questions. All right. Uh, let's see. Any other business that anticipated by the chair? Does anyone have anything that they would like to discuss or anything they want to bring up that is not on the agenda at this particular time? I just have a question, Rich. I, I think I missed something about is there a new perspective commissioner on the horizon or there is not 
uh, other th than the ones that were mentioned by Jen? Th there is, there is, well, there is not that I'm aware of. Okay, thanks. You know, I think we've all, I think Molly has, uh, Molly said um, she had someone that was interested and then Jen has a few people that are interested. So we're definitely looking for another commissioner uh, to, to, to fill the, I encourage Devora. I don't know Devora if you've filled out the form or she's thinking about it. Okay, but I don't want to, put you on the spot. to all the other people that are attending here, if you would like to apply to be on board, you just fill out a form and turn it into the mayor's office. Isn't that the process, Rich? That is correct. Yeah, and if you want to, if you have more questions about what's involved or if your skills are applicable, you can talk to Rich. And the <laughs> Thanks, biggest Molly. thing is passion and willing to come and you can read the minutes from past meetings to get up to speed. It's not like you have to come in knowing what's happened. You can easily- And you don't it. necessarily have to be a plant professional. No. No. We're looking no. for a broad breadth of uh, representation and skills. Communicators, educators, data people. Um, Social networker. Yeah. yeah. Policy wonks. Yeah, I think what's made this uh, commission successful is we've had a a, um, a lot of folks from different backgrounds um, that all love plants, that all love trees, um, and we've all found a way to make it all mesh, and we've been really successful. We've been very fortunate, actually. We're a very active commission, um, and we actually get a lot accomplished. Um, and I and I'm not. Um, I'm very proud of that. Uh, you know, yes, it's easy. Um, I'm, I'm also the tree warden, so there's a whole other story behind that. But I, as a commission, I've watched you all work um, from the very beginning, um, the original members and new members, and we've just got a lot done. Uh, and even through the pandemic, we slogged through it, uh, and we were still able to manage to plant trees. We were still able to meet, although it was delayed, but very impressive. Um, you know, I suppose if we were like a legislative body that had legislative plow powers, we'd probably be a little slower, but um, we're That's very- That's a good important. point. We're advisory. So yeah. it yeah. brings people together around trees. We don't have power, but we have a voice. <laughs> uh, um, so yes, anyone who is interested, who is considering or has any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or Sue Lofthouse, because Sue is the vice chair. Um, so that would be great. Uh, I, I do want to, I wanted to say two things. If uh, One is that um, one thing I forgot to mention uh, about the conference that I went to. Um, I We had a presentation from uh, Nancy Bully, who actually works for Frank Schmidt and Son out in Oregon. Um, she talked about uh, their development of new tree uh, uh, species and cultivars. So she was a person that uh, I actually was able to reach out to who might be willing to also give us a presentation, a, a, a shortened presentation. They One of the things that I found interesting, she didn't have the list with her at this, but she said that uh, Schmidt and Son has actually developed a, um, a tree plant, a tree, a recommended tree species for pollinator plants. And they've actually been working on new uh, cultivars of that. So that would be very interesting given the fact that we're trying to always kind of intertwine what we're doing and thinking about the rest of, um, you know, the, the, the landscape, the urban landscape. So that was um, a really interesting talk that she had. Um, that would be great. Thing, the other thing is that uh, Sue and I are going to meet with Kent to have a discussion about um, our data collection for the city's canopy uh, tomorrow. So we will have a report for you at our next meeting. And that's all I have to add. I have a question about that. If we had a discussion of, of the data that you've, about the data that we've already got, just showing that, uh, I think it was uh, 1995 through, and then 2022, that the overall city, the, um, has not changed in terms of tree canopy pretty much, but then we got data of 2022 for the urban core. Mm -hmm. 
and no other data. Is that is that where we yeah. are? Is that one yes. Of two yeah. Yes, and I've reached back out to Dave Bloniars to try to take that urban um, those data points just for the urban areas and see if he can expand upon them and actually go backwards in time to see if we you know what using the same data points that he picked. Unfortunately, the problem is is that uh, the he's sending me a PDF of what he picked, so I can't I can't zoom in on it. I can't actually see where the data points sit. Um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that sits basically in downtown Northampton, Florence and part of Leeds. Um, but it would be helpful for me to get a little, to get more data from him. Uh, again, yeah. you know, the, I think we just need to be judicious about how we go about it and make sure we try to get as much data as possible and get the best data possible and then make some really good informed decisions from there about how we want to move forward. Uh, yeah. I also asked Dave Bloniers if if I uh, provided him with some uh, um, GIS layer for a, a uh, uh, ward map, if he would be able to do that as well, so we could actually do it by ward. But I haven't heard back from him. So, so I'm, like, or, uh, I'm sorry, what, Rob? It'd be great because it seemed like having when you're zoomed all the way out to the whole city, that things are fairly stable. But we don't know if that means that we're growing a lot of trees out in the western part of the state, the city. And cutting down all the trees in the urban core, we don't. There's nothing to tell us that from what we have so far. So well, there's that subset of points that's the urban area, right? Yeah, but right. the urban area we only have one the, the current year. So oh, that's right. Yeah, right. we have the current year, which says we have 48 percent uh, canopy coverage versus about 61 or 62 citywide, which encompasses the whole you know uh the within the boundaries of the city uh, right and the city wide is extremely stable it, it, i mean over i think it was almost it, 30 years it, it's changed it's it, it's it hasn't changed more than the margin of error of the study it, it is yeah. it is stable but i would have to say since the uh i'd have to say there have been there's quite a few single by right construction single family homes going up um that are not within um the density housing model that the city has i see a lot of single family homes going up in places that i that are new so it'd be interesting to capture all that data to figure out because they're you know they basically anyone as, as you remember we had doug mcdonald come to our our meeting um doug uh told us that if there's a disturbance uh, or land clearing greater than an acre um, you know, they have to file for a stormwater permit, which kind of raises a whole bunch of red flags and and creates a different threshold because now you have to have a stormwater management plan. Um, but there are a few places that are people are basically, you know, clearing lots and up to uh, just under an acre, which doesn't really register um, anywhere other than I see a trench permit or potentially a new driveway permit. So I actually know that they're happening, but there's no way to capture um that data in in real time because I don't know like how many trees they're cutting down etc so I think it'll be interesting because I you know although the the two the two data sets that Dave sent us from 1995 and um 2000, uh, 2022 are the same data points at the same locations you know they're they may not necessarily be capturing in the 2022 set the places that have had significant tree removal like on top of Turkey Hill Road, for example, or on Sylvester Road, or on top of um, the top of North Farms, uh, sorry, the top of Country Way, there was a huge lot that was cleared there for a single family home. So, um, but anyways, I just, just we'll just keep moving on and getting the data that we need um, to have a, a, a good discussion about this. Um, a lot of topics. Yes. Uh, anyone else have any other questions, comments? Um, everyone has like their marching orders, I guess, right? So Molly is going to do the list. I have things to give to Rob. Um, I'm going to work, reach out to Barbara. Okay, great. I will finish up Friday with the uh, lead school and I'll get those maps to whoever's supposed to have them and the lists and uh, should see that Friday. Okay. All Exciting. right.
Excellent. I just want to say right. thank, thank action. you. Whoop. What's that, Rob? Action. Action. <laughs> yes, action. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all the members of the public that are here. It's great to have folks. Um, it's nice to have people here. And thank you for your interest and your support. As always, please feel free to reach out to myself or Sue if you have any questions or comments about our meeting. Um, and with that said, I would take a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll move to adjourn the meeting. It's Jen. All right. Uh, can I have a second, please? I, I second the motion. All right. All right. I guess that would that would say any discussion on this motion. Um, there is no discussion. The meeting is adjourned.